Hi, my name is Dr. Felucia and I'm a licensed psychologist. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking specifically about why spiritually abusive people, spiritually abusive uh, institutions, and other people connected to the act of spiritual abuse fear your anger. Okay, so I've talked about spiritual abuse in a lot of my videos. And I've also talked about how spiritual abusers try to control the emotional experience of the person on the receiving end of that. So today I'm going to be talking specifically about anger and why it is something that spiritually abusive people fear. And I'm going to go over three reasons and they all begin with the letter I. So the first one is insight. You know, when you're an in, when you are in an institution that's spiritually abusive, or when you are interacting with somebody who's spiritually spiritually abusive, you have to remember that they feel entitled to two things. They feel entitled to number one, your time, and number two, your resources. And your resources not only are financial, but they're emotional as well, right? And so, if you are angry, it shows that you have insight into something that is wrong. And spiritually abusive people and institutions don't like that because once the light bulb goes off in your head that something is wrong, then it means that something needs to be done. And so that's the first reason is insight. And another aside, I just want you to also understand that um, when I talk about that they fear your anger, I'm not talking about the emotional expression of anger, right? Um, which is neither good nor bad. It just depends on how you express yourself. I'm talking more about your own um, relationship with your anger. And when you start to realize that you are angry about something, that's something that is a big no-no for spiritual abusers and spiritually abusive institutions. So again, the first one is insight. When you are angry, it oftentimes can be connected to some sort of insight that you have, insight about yourself, insight about things going on around you that are wrong and so forth. Before I go on to the next two, I'd like to request that if you have not subscribed to this channel, please take a moment to do so if that's something you'd like to do. Um, and also, if you feel led to, please share um, and comment on these videos, because what they do is that they um, show this content to other people similar to yourself that um, are finding benefit from it. So if you haven't done so already, please do so. So talk about the first reason being insight. The second reason is independence, right? When people are angry, it shows that they are, to an extent, independent, right? In these spiritually abusive environments, one thing that I'll hear from people that have been through spiritual abuse is that they'll say, um, either at the time or even through their recovery, that they don't feel angry. And for me, that's a, um, I'm not talking about feeling angry about the abuse. They just don't feel anger, period. I've talked to people and worked with people before that at some point during their recovery, they realize that they are incapable of feeling angry. They'll say things that are unrealistic, like I never get angry. Anything could happen to me and I never get angry. And I could, I'm not gonna go into the weeds about this psychologically about you know why that's a problem, but it does signal to me that they probably have been in some kind of environment or influence where they were suppressed, they were um, punished for being angry, they were told that being angry um, is a sin, that it's bad, that you're a bad person if you ever feel anger and so forth. So when you are in a spiritually abusive institution or a relationship with someone who's spiritually abusive, once you start to say that you are angry, once you express and communicate that anger, it shows that you are independent, that you are gaining your independence. And of course, independent people are very difficult, if impossible, to control. So that's why spiritually abusive institutions and people don't like your anger. So that anger also signals your independence, right? Independence in thought and independence in action. You're basically saying when you become angry that, look, Something is going on, I don't like it, and you are in essence forming a boundary, you're beginning to form one, okay? Um, and then the last one that I'm going to talk about, the third I, is an action, and basically an end to an action. Spiritually abusive people and spiritually abusive environments want their victims to be passive. They basically want them to hand over their emotional experience as part of their resources, other resources and their time, and basically their, their entire person to this institution and to this person, right? When you become angry, you are saying, not anymore. I have the right to be angry. You know, it's not anger in and of itself, it's not a problem. It is 
how you choose to express it. You can express anger in very healthy ways that help you um, get your need, needs met, that help you advocate for others and do things that help you understand that, look, you need to take care of yourself or there's a problem that you need to take care of. So um, I don't have... I'm not one of those people that believes that anger is bad. It is how you express the anger, what you choose to do about that emotional experience of anger. So when you are angry, what this um, sent, the, the signal that it sends to spiritually abusive people and institutions is, hey, this inaction is, is heading to, a, um, is coming to an end. I'm going to do something. I'm empowered. I'm in, you know, I have insight. I have independence. And now I'm empowered to take some sort of action. And spiritually abusive people and environments, they thrive on the passivity and inaction of their victims. Okay. So I'm going to go over those three one more time. The first one is um, insight. When you're angry, you may have insight into something that needs to change which spiritually, you know, which abusive people don't like. Second is independence, right? And if abusive people are all about control, your independence now becomes a threat. The third one is inaction. And the when I say inaction, the inaction is coming to an end. And now you're going to start engaging in active ways to um, stop what's going on, okay? So those are three reasons why spiritually abusive people fear your anger, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Do you know, do you have any other reasons why you think that anger is such a problem for spiritually abusive people? And how have you managed that? Uh, you know, has there been a time when you've gotten angry and that led to, uh, you know, gaining, for you gaining independence or gaining healing from um, these spiritually abusive experiences? So I'd love to hear from you in the comments. If you'd like to book a free consultation with me, you can go to my web, my website, skillsetcounseling.com, or you can just click on my email um, in the description section and send me an email. Okay, may you have a day that is full of peace. Bye-bye.